talking sewing gadgets, let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Claire. So, sorry if you see a few beads of sweat coming down my face. It is so hot here and I'm not coping too well. But, you know, us Brits, we don't cope with a bit of sunshine, do we? So, we're gonna go on, we're gonna batten down the hatches and get on with this video. So I don't know about you, but when I first started sewing eight years ago, I was buying all the gadgets, all of them. If it looked like a sewing implement, then I was buying it. Check out my video, the dumbest sewing purchases I've made, and you will see some of them. Honestly, it is just, oh, it's like a magpie, a magpie. Thankfully, I've calmed down somewhat. So at the moment, I'm in the middle of a big declutter. I've just organised my storage room and I am getting rid of lots of stuff that I no longer use. And that does include sewing gadgets. Today, I want to show you the sewing gadgets that I really recommend and I use again and again and again. They might not be groundbreaking, but they are what I use. And I thought it might be useful for you as well. So the first gadget I want to show you is one that you saw right at the start of the video actually and that is my Simflex. So this is called a Simflex Expanding Sewing Gauge and the reason you would use this is, well the reason I use it is for my buttonhole placement but it does say you can use it for shearing, for smocking, buttons, eyes, drapery, pleats, dress pleats and much more and it has instructions on the back it expands a really wide and each spoke has a hole in it and you would just put your pen in there and mark your fabric you've got to determine how far apart you want your buttons then determine how many buttons you want then you place this on your button placket at the distance you want Sometimes this hasn't got enough buttons for how many I want or enough spokes for buttons Especially if I want it a little bit closer Because I mean who wants their buttons that far apart if I have it quite close I might do half the placket and then do the other half But one downfall of this is it only does horizontal button holes like that so if you wanted vertical I would put a dot in each place and then draw a vertical line. It also has markings. I will freeze the frame so you can see it properly. So you can get a really, really accurate mark if that is how you roll. Oh. I'm gonna have no makeup left on by the end of this video. I will leave affiliate links for all the things I'm using down below for Amazon. I will list them for the UK and for the US. I hope that is of some help to you. If you do click on one of my affiliate links, that's just gonna be really helpful to me because I get a little kickback from that and that'll be at no extra cost to you. But this was a gift from a Megan Handmade, a lovely YouTuber. If you don't know her, do go and check her out. She ran some um, giveaways a couple of years ago at Christmas. This was one of them and I won it as a giveaway. And I am so pleased because it's something I always wanted, but I hadn't purchased myself. The next gadget is something really, really simple. And that is this little ruler see my hand shaking do ignore me i do have hand tremors um it's just something i deal with so it can't be helped this is a six by one inch ruler it's an acrylic ruler it cost a couple of pounds and i use this so so much the main reason i use this is to mark my hems because it's really good if you want to turn your hem up by one inch then this is really really good for that but I use it for many many other things as well if I need a smaller ruler there's not much else to say about this it is a quilting ruler so you will find it in the quilting section maybe I should do a video on quilting accessories that work for garment sewing would you be interested in that I might well do that so the next thing is a knife and scissors sharpener block which is this, it's broken, it came broke actually in the post. So I got this on recommendation from Micheline over at Miss You Makes ages ago, I'm talking years ago, a couple of years ago maybe, she did a video where she showed you can sharpen 
your scissors, your knives, your rotary blades, everything can be sharpened on this. It's actually just a knife sharpening block that they have for kitchens. A bit of stone, a bit of concrete, I think. I don't really know what it is. I think it's concrete. And you can see I have used it quite a bit and it does work. I find it worked that well with my rotary blades, but certainly with my scissors, it does work really, really well. So the next thing to share with you, something that I bought just last week actually, and it was an absolute steal, it really was, and that is this metal ruler. This is a 60 centimeter or a 24 inch metal ruler. It's very flexible, but obviously got some stability because it's metal. So I picked this up in the pound shop. So if you're in America, maybe have a look in your Dollar Tree or um, other dollar stores. But this was in the DIY section at Poundland. So a pound that would be just over a dollar for you guys. And I think this is gonna come in really handy. So I would use this for pattern drafting maybe or for measuring my patterns that I downloaded. All sorts of things. You wouldn't use this for your body, but everything else you probably could. And it's got a little hole at the top, so I can hang it up. While we're talking about Poundland, I picked something else up that same day, and that is this roll of paper. A small roll of paper. I think it might be recycled. So you could use this for wrapping if you wanted. It certainly wasn't for pattern drafting in the shop. I do have footage of the label, so I'll put that on here. And I tried this out for the B-roll that I'm showing you now. And actually, it draws on absolutely lovely. And it cuts nicely. If you just needed a smaller width of paper, then head down to your pound shop or your Dollar Tree to see if they've got one of these. I have a big, big roll of paper. So I don't necessarily need this for anything more than quick drafts or, or if I was doing something really small. Maybe when I'm drafting my own patterns, say for like my DIY channel, I might use this rather than getting a big piece because my big roll is, my big roll's 90 centimetres wide and it's not always appropriate for everything because then I pull off a bit of paper and I end up wasting quite a bit. So this will help with that. So the next sewing gadget that I want to talk to you about is one that comes up in my comments a lot. You see it a fair amount in my videos and you're always really intrigued by it. And that is my mini iron. So I've got this little travel iron and I use it in my videos mainly because, you know, I'm either showing you something that's really fiddly to press it's just better for the shot as well because it's small so I get it all in the shot rather than getting my big heavy iron out. Also, using my big heavy iron, you know, it's heavy and it wears me out a little bit if I'm using it a lot. So this one is absolutely perfect. This is really good. You can see how well used that is. This is really good for getting in, in those little corners. So if you wanted to do like a shirt collar, I put that there then and I thought, oh my God, don't do that. You'll burn yourself. And then I realised it isn't actually plugged in. <laughs> oh God, I shouldn't laugh at myself. So yeah, you might want to do your collars or like if you're trying to press seams and you want to press your underarm. Is that a thumbnail, do you reckon? Any small little seams, this is fantastic. So I've got this off of Amazon. There's the actual top. And I've shown this in gadget videos before, but it's so, I know I've got a lot of new followers lately and this that you might not have come across in my other videos in terms of talking about it. It's a steam iron. It's got a little place to put your water in. It's got some settings. It's not the most basic either. I think I paid 20 pounds for this and it's one of my most used gadgets, I have to say. My next gadget is a this contraption. This is an elastic threader. So, you know when you've created a um, tunnel, it's not called a tunnel, is it? What is it called? When you create a channel, a channel, that's what it's called. So, you create a channel in, maybe in your dress at the waist, in order to put elastic through it, and you use a safety pin 
but sometimes you haven't either haven't got a safety pin or maybe like me you've got a tremor and it's difficult to use a safety pin you're not going to lose this you're not going to get this twisted put a couple of holes there where you would thread the elastic through and it i've used it many many times and it does stay in this contraption all the way through the main issue is and i've done this a few times is that you create your channel and then it's not wide enough for this when i got this this come with three different widths and sizes so it's so smaller and bigger ones. I don't know where the other ones have gone. So when I create my channels, I always have to make sure there is the width for this to go through. Um, but it's also got dot, it dots, holes to thread things through as well. So I imagine you could use this for other things. What else would you use this for? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. Do you use one of these? While I'm at it, do let me know down below which is your favourite gadgets, which ones you use, which ones you're interested in. That would be really interesting to me, so do let me know. So on to the next one. The next one is the this pair of snips. So I bought these from Merchant and Mills a little while ago, maybe around Christmas time. I actually bought my good friend Alicia a pair of these as well. So if you see them pop up in her video over at Thoughtful Creativity, then you're not seeing things if you think we've both got exactly the same snips we have. Um, so I bought myself a pair at the same time. For £8, you cannot go wrong. And these are actually really great. I just have next to the sewing machine when you're sewing. I don't know about you, but I'm forever looking for some snips while I'm sewing just to snip my threads as I'm coming out of the sewing machine, I think I'm going to put like a little command strip, like a hook on the side of my sewing machine and just keep them there because that's where I use them the most. So the next gadget I have to show you, I probably should have shown you right after the buttonhole placement gadget thing that I showed you and that is my buttonholer. For years and years when I was creating buttonholes, I would take my seam ripper and pull it through, but it, you can rip the whole buttonhole very, very easily. A quick tip for that is to put a pin at each end of your buttonhole so that when you seam rip, it won't go past the pin. And that saved me on many, many a time. But at one point when I was buying all the gadgets, this was one of them that I bought. Put this in the space between your stitching push it down and it creates a hole in your fabric and there's no slipping around you get a perfect hole so this is really good for that I do sometimes find I need a hammer put a hammer on top to get a good hole because just going like this I don't have the strength to get through it so I just put a hammer quickly on just a couple of light taps and then it goes through but this could do with sharpening as well now I've had it a number of years so the next sewing gadget I want to share with you is this no not pins not a seam ripper but the actual vessel that it's on this is a magnetic dish so it's got a magnet inside it basically and so anything metal will stick to it this is a fantastic if you drop your pins and they go everywhere just hover this over them and it picks it up this was a game changer for me a real game changer um, i used to step on pins all the time it was driving me mad no matter how many you picked up off the floor there was always more to find I haven't got one of these what are you even doing go get yourself one so i've got a big bag of air drying clay that i'm going to do some projects on my other channel and one of the projects I want to do is to create a magnetic dish. It's really functional, but they're not very attractive. So I want to create my own one. And I might take the magnet out of one of these or just purchase some magnets off eBay and put it inside a bowl that I make so that I can make a magnetic thingy. How cool would that be? Do subscribe to my other channel, which you can see a link just here for right now if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it do hit subscribe and 
perhaps consider purchasing a Kofi for me if you'd like to support my channel further. Till next time, happy sewing. I will see you very soon. Bye for now.